So today we thought we'd have a look at what all of the stuff that sits in front of the pilot is in the aircraft. One of the most common questions we get asked as pilots uh, by the general public is what all those knobs, switches, gauges and dials are that sit in front of the pilot and what do they all do. I thought we would have a look at our, um, our commercial flight training platform, the Piper Arrow today and I'll uh, take us around the dash and what some of the, um, the gauges and instruments are showing us what the engine quadrants uh, controls are for, uh, what the flight controls are for, etc. Um, and uh, it'll be of interest to those of you out there who uh, aren't pilots themselves or possibly some of our more junior students who are still battling away in the Cessna 150. This aircraft's a little bit more advanced than the Cessna 150. Uh, the Piper Arrow is uh, a single engine piston aircraft with a constant speed unit in it which has a variable uh, pitch propeller. It allows us to change the blade angle in flight to give us more efficiency and higher speeds as well as our retractable undercarriage which also gives us those higher speeds which are very helpful. Uh, about 135 knots in the cruise this aircraft which is around 250 kilometres an hour. Um, so we'll wander out now, we'll have a look at the, uh, at the panel and hopefully you'll get a little bit out of it. So let's go. So we're in the aircraft now, and as you can see, we've got the panel here in front of us. Um, so I'm going to walk us around the panel and, um, and show you what all of this uh, stuff in front of the pilot here does. Um, and for most of our students out there, they'll know most of this, of course, but uh, to uh, non-pilots, uh, a lot of it would have been a mystery up till now, and hopefully we can clear that up for you. So what I'm going to do first is uh, turn the uh, master switch on on the electrical panel here and that allows uh, the uh, main bus to be connected to the battery to allow all of the electrics to come on uh, and we've got our uh, avionics master power switch coming on now and that allows our radio stack to come on and our electronic flight instruments as well so we'll start with the, uh, the main flight instruments uh, which are these six here one, two, three, four, five and six those six instruments will always be placed in the same position in a conventional aircraft uh, from about 1970 or so onwards. Prior to that they could have been scattered all over the dash anywhere. Um, but uh, they tend to be fixed in the same position uh, and uh, they're colloquially known as a six pack to most pilots. Top left we have the airspeed indicator which tells us how fast we're moving uh, through the air. That's our indicated airspeed. Uh, there are different types of airspeeds, I don't want to get into too much complexity at this stage, but that's the, uh, the indicated airspeed uh, of the aircraft through the air, uh, measured in nautical miles per hour uh, or knots. One knot is 1.852 kilometres an hour, so 100 knots is about 185 kilometres an hour on there. Uh, there are different colour codings uh, that have different meanings for a pilot. Um, moving across to the next one, we have an electronic flight attitude indicator here, uh, replacing the standard analog instrument that used to be in there. It gives us a bit more information, uh, it becomes a multi-function display as well, uh, but the primary uh, reason for this instrument here is the attitude information here, which tells the uh, pilot whether the aircraft is pitched up or pitched down below the horizon or in a bank left or right. Uh, moving across from there, we have our altimeter. The altimeter tells the pilot what our height is in feet above means sea level generally. Uh, it needs to be reset um, when high and low pressure systems move across the countryside uh, to give us an accurate height reference or altitude above sea level. Um, and the uh, elevation of the airport here at Warnervale is 25 feet. So prior to departure, we would set this, and it's already on about 25 feet. I set that before. Uh, but we can, depending on the pressure setting, we can adjust that uh, in flight or before departure. Uh, if 
we look down the uh, bottom left down here, we have the turn coordinator. The turn coordinator tells us how quickly we're uh, changing our heading, left and right, and also tells us whether we're in balance or not with the little balance ball down the bottom here. In the centre at the bottom there, we have a, um, an electronic uh, direction indicator. Uh, this one has the capability to show both magnetic heading and GPS track. Um, at the moment, it's set to uh, magnetic heading and it needs to be reset. Uh, it's not indicating the correct heading at the moment, but before flight, we would uh, reset that one as well to indicate the correct heading and we slave that to the, or set it anyway, to the magnetic compass up above here. The magnetic compass is always accurate because it's getting its uh, magnetic information from the, um, the magnetic north pole. Um, however, it does suffer from acceleration and turning errors in flight. So it's not very stable to read in flight. So we normally set the, the uh, heading indicator here, which is stabilised by a gyroscope, uh, to the same heading that the compass is showing because it's much easier to read in flight. But it does need to be, unless you have a much more advanced system, it does need to be recalibrated with the magnetic compass at regular intervals. We have our vertical speed indicator next and that tells us our uh, uh, change in rates of climb or descent uh, and this one's calibrated in hundreds of feet a minute so if the needle's above the zero position we're climbing, if it's below we're descending and it's measured you know 500, 1000, 1500 and 2000 feet per minute climb or descent. We have a couple of navigation aids to the, uh, to the right of the basic six pack. We have a VHF omnidirectional radio range uh, indicator up the top here. Um, so that's a VOR. A VOR is an acronym, which as I said stands for VHF omnidirectional radio range. And the V part of that is itself an, an acronym. So that's a nested acronym, which is quite confusing. Um, so that, uh, we use that to navigate across the Earth's surface uh, we won't go into the details of that one at this stage. And we have another type of navigation aid underneath there. Uh, that's an automatic direction finder or ADF and it uh, talks to a non-directional beacon on the ground or an NDB uh, as another means of uh, working out your position. Uh, these are both quite old systems. They're slowly being phased out in preference for GPS usage, um, uh, which is an area navigation system. And here's our GPS over here. So. Moving across from those um, flight instruments, we move into the radio stack here, or the avionics section. At the top here, we have a GNS 430, uh, which is a combined radio receiver and transmitter, and a GPS unit as well. So if we just activate that, um, you'll see it starts to find some satellites, and we've fixed our position now, and uh, it works as an, an IFR-approved GPS receiver in this aircraft and it actually can slave into the CDI or the centre needle on the VOR uh, indicator over here to tell us whether we're left or right of our GPS track that we've uh, selected over here. So if I was to do a direct to say Maitland uh, YMND Maitland enter and enter we get a magenta line telling us how to get to Maitland and we get various other information on here as well telling us our distance to go, our current ground speed, our direct track, our current track and estimated time uh, of arrival and estimated time en route as well as our current um, radio frequencies uh, both on the uh, active and standby and, uh, and our VOR indicator frequencies there if we were using them. It has a whole heap of different functions, that unit there, but we're not going to go into any more detail of that at this stage. Underneath that, we have our second comm radio. At the moment, we have 1258 Sydney Centre uh, on the active and 1257 Brisbane Centre on the standby. We have our ADF radio underneath that, and then we have our transponder. So the transponder tells, uh, uh, the, uh, tells air traffic control where the aircraft is uh, when we're in radar coverage. And for more modern aircraft, uh, it can be also used to uh, give position information uh, to um, uh, traffic collision avoidance systems and, um, and what we call ADSB uh, functions as well, which um, gives a heightened uh, amount of awareness to uh, appropriately equipped aircraft, but we won't go through that in more detail. 
at this stage. Uh, above that radio stack we have our audio selector panel which basically tells the, um, the pilot which radio is currently in use and whether it's um, set to transmit or just receive uh, and on all of the different radios and as well as some other functions where we can isolate the front and the back of the aircraft etc. Um, underneath that we have our electrical panel, so we have our master switch uh, which we have on at the moment so we can see our avionics. We have our fuel pump, our landing light, our rotating be uh, beacon and collision, anti-collision lights, pedo heat and panel lights and nav lights on either side there. Beneath that we have our engine control quadrant. This one here is the throttle control. It controls the power output of the engine. Uh, next to that, the blue one here is our propeller pitch control. It controls the current RPM setting on the propeller. And to get a percentage power output, we use, have to use a combination of the throttle and the propeller pitch controls. The, um, the throttle controls how much manifold pressure we're putting out. And the propeller pitch control uh, controls our current RPM, which is indicated on this um, engine management gauge over on the far left over here. Uh, which uh, we have a backup of our manifold pressure and our RPM over there. It also gives us oil temps and pressures, fuel flows and all sorts of information on this um, gauge on the far left. Um, the red control here on the engine uh, quadrant is the engine mixture control. It basically uh, allows the pilot to adjust the amount of fuel that's being allowed to enter the engine. Uh, to um, have the right ratio of fuel to air at different altitudes and different density altitudes. Um, if we bring the mixture all the way down to the bottom there, that shuts the fuel off completely and shuts the engine down. That's why it's red, red meaning danger. And um, if, we, um, if we're not careful with that, of course, we could shut the fuel off uh, in flight accidentally and shut the engine down, which we don't want to do. So therefore it's painted red. Um, but we do shut the engine down at the end of the flight generally by using that one there. Uh, this gauge, if you can see it down here next to the throttle uh, on the dash, uh, it's shaped like a wheel because that is the uh, landing gear uh, knob allows us to um, retract or extend the landing gear because this is retractable undercarriage aircraft and you can see we've got three green lights here. So at the moment it's in the down position obviously, we're on the ground which is a good thing and it's showing us that we currently have the nose wheel and two main landing gears are all green indicating that they're down and locked and it's safe. Um, if we lowered the landing gear in flight and we didn't get a, a, an indication on all three of those, uh, we would need to go through a troubleshooting process uh, to try and get them extended and there are um, emergency extension procedures we can go through to get that to happen. Uh, this gauge here, as I said before, is a manifold pressure gauge and also the fuel flow gauge. So it shows us uh, percentage power outputs on the engine and how much fuel is currently uh, moving through the engine. Um, if we look over to the far left over here, we have uh, a backup of the engine pressure gauge uh, and we also have uh, an ammeter. The ammeter shows us alternator output. Um, it's a left zero ammeter on this one. Uh, so basically it's indicating um, how much uh, current that the, um, the alternator is pushing out towards the, uh, inst uh, towards the systems on the aircraft. So the more electrical gear we have switched on, the higher and higher uh, setting we'll see on the ammeter gauge there. Um, if it drops back to zero, it means the alternator has probably failed and the battery is now supplying power and we'll lose electrics at some point. So it's a good point, uh, a good time to go start hunting for an airfield to land at to get it rectified if you ever see that. Uh, over on the right hand side here, we have an exhaust gas temperature gauge, um, which can help us lean the engine correctly. Uh, but that is also backed up uh, now on this more advanced system on the far left here. And then we move over towards our electrical panel, which gives us uh, basically protection for all the electrical systems on the aircraft. It's a circuit breaker panel, uh, so before flying we need to check to make sure none of those circuit breakers have, have popped. And, um, and during flight, if we have an issue, uh, it will protect itself by popping that circuit breaker rather than causing a fire or something if there was an overload condition. The three main flight controls on the aircraft, the elevator, ailerons and rudder. The elevator controls pitch or up and down, so we pull back on that stick, the nose pitches up, push forward, the nose pitches down. And uh, if we want to roll the aircraft left and right, just much, much like a car, 
left and right on the control wheel there, or the control yoke. And then the foot pedals on the floor here control the rudder at the back to yaw the aircraft in this sort of a plane. So that's uh, a very, very quick um, overview of what we have up the front here. And we're managing all of that throughout the flight. Um, there's a lot of training needed to get to the stage where you can do that effectively and safely whilst keeping a good scan for other aircraft and uh, uh, organising air traffic control clearances and navigating, of course. Uh, but uh, it's all doable, and that's what we do here at Warnervale. We train our pilots to do that safely and effectively. We've been doing that for uh, somewhere uh, in the region of uh, 40 years or more now. Uh, so I hope you, uh, you all got a bit out of that. And um, if you uh, liked what you saw today, let us know and we can, um, we can do more of these uh, tutorial type videos and maybe uh, let us know in the comments uh, what you would like to see an explanation of and we will do our best to try and get to that when we can. Thanks all and we'll see you next time.